Kevin already did a 2020 outlook for the broader crypto space. Let me just focus on Bitcoin in this new episode of What's Up Bitcoin. How will 2020 look like specifically for Bitcoin? In today's episode, we will look into the big trends that I expect for Bitcoin in 2020, and those relate of course to the halving, and more specifically, we will explore whether or not it is perhaps already priced in. There has been a lot of discussion about that already, specifically related to the so-called efficient market theory, which Kevin already mentioned in his video. We will explore that a little more today in part 1 of this 2020 outlook. The most anticipated event for 2020 is probably the Bitcoin halving, as many in the space attach much significance to it due to the narrative that it will spark the next bull market, which many believe has happened with the previous halvings as well. What is the halving? Kevin already made a good explainer about the Bitcoin halving last year. Be sure to check it out, the link will pop up in the corner of the screen. I will just give a quick summary. The halving means that the block reward that miners receive as compensation for their committed computer power is going to be cut in half. When Bitcoin started, the block reward was 50 Bitcoin per block. After the first halving in 2012, it became 25. After the second halving, 12.5, which it is now. And the next halving will be mid-May 2020, according to the block reward halving countdown the 12th of May. Then the reward will become 6.25 Bitcoin per block. Besides the miners receiving less rewards suddenly, most importantly the inflation rate drops significantly for Bitcoin, meaning the amount of new Bitcoin that is added to the total supply. Before we continue, if you like the content of this series, you can like this video and additionally subscribe to our channel to be updated when we release the other episodes of this season or of our other series. Now the theory with regard to the halving is that because less new supply is released on the market and the inflation rate drops, making Bitcoin scarcer, this sudden shock in supply and demand dynamics has been the primary ignition of the previous bull markets. And so is the expectation of the next 2020 halving, that also this upcoming halving will be followed by the next bull run. This chart shows the previous halving cycles with their typical phases. A few of the main patterns are, each post-halving bull market lasted a bit longer. Each bull market the increase was a lower percentage than the previous. The breaking of the previous all-time high, the majority of total price increase and the next bull market peak usually happen about a year following the halving, though with increasing intervals. One important criticism against the influence of the halving on the price and things like the stock to flow model is the efficient market theory. The claim is that if efficient market theory is true, the halving and scarcity feature of Bitcoin is already priced in and no more profit can be made from it. We will explore if this might be the case. Efficient market theory is a popular economic theory and widely accepted by economists. The basic idea is that according to efficient market theory, markets are efficient information processing systems delivering the best possible price discovery. The argument states that the halving cycle price trend narrative and stock to flow model are based on publicly available information, such as stock to flow and Bitcoin supply trajectory, and therefore the analysis and conclusion must be already priced in. Thus, no profits can be made from this information. Permabul, Tom Lee from Fundstrat and Anthony Pompiano disagree and both have claimed on the other hand that this halving is still not priced in. Are there any merits to their claim? It has sparked a lot of discussions about the validity of efficient market theory and if it applies to the halving cycles of Bitcoin. Efficient market theory, or EMT, is not without criticism between economists and there is controversy on the strictness of interpretation. Roughly, there are three different interpretations of EMT. The weak interpretation, only historical price data is priced in. This means that technical analysis does not work to make profit. The semi-strong interpretation, public information is already priced in because there is no way to front-run the information, thus fundamental analysis cannot be used to be profitable. And the strong interpretation, all, even inside information, is already priced in and cannot be used to make profits. Most economists reject the strong interpretation of EMT, but they do subscribe to anything between weak and semi-strong, and therefore believe in the existence of reasonably efficient markets. Still, there is also a significant portion within the economists that reject EMT as useful for determining the influence on market price, and who have other theories around market behavior and how to profit from them. I am not going to argue with the majority of economists trying to prove or debunk economic theories that have been studied for decades. However, it is clear to see that when unexpected events occur, for example a hurricane destroying cornfields, that they have an immediate impact on price, as expectations that community investors had on the corn harvest need to be adjusted. The then actual harvest that indeed has a lower result will not affect the price anymore because that was already expected by the market and as such already priced in before the actual harvest results. 
Same thing happens with earnings reports of companies. The price of a stock can even go up despite publishing lower earnings. If in fact those earnings actually came out better than was previously expected by the market analysts. If you as an investor find a new piece of information, the general rule then is, can you reasonably expect that the extensive investor research companies already know this information too? If so, that piece of data can be expected to be priced in too, as market moving players already took their positions accordingly. According to this logic, in theory, the market already knows the Bitcoin halving is coming, so we should assume that this information is already priced in. Thus, we should not expect a bull rally due to the halving or stock to flow properties of Bitcoin. Or should we? In my opinion, efficient market theory can exist assuming that the Bitcoin markets are reasonably efficient and publicly information is indeed priced in, while at the same time still not invalidating the existence of price models around scarcity, like stock to flow, or narratives around halving cycle price behavior. Which means even though the factual knowledge of Bitcoin's scarcity features are already priced in, the halving may still result in a bull market, at least in theory. The scarcity feature, the future supply and block subsidy halving schedule are known facts even before the first halving took place and no one disagrees that future halvings will happen. This is not open to interpretation, therefore this pure fact will not any longer influence the price and therefore EMT is not relevant anymore for this fact. Though these facts of the supply schedule don't impact the price anymore according to EMT, the expected and actual impact and influence that it has on supply-demand dynamics and the impact and influence of the dynamic on price behavior is not at all clear and still open to many interpretations. As they are not facts, they cannot be known and market participants will have their expectations which might be right but also might be wrong. Some historical price data and models already exist, including the stock-to-flow model, but the two previous halvings provide a very tiny data set to draw definitive conclusions from on the impact and influence of the halvings and stock-to-flow on market dynamics. What may affect the price relative to expectations on the impact of supply-demand dynamics, but may yet not be priced in. Different investors may overestimate or underestimate this impact, resulting in premiums or discounts in price relative to the actual impact of halvings depending on the aggregated market bias. Large sums of new money entering the market by new investors, who were previously unaware of the halving narrative and the scarcity feature of Bitcoin. Their knowledge of facts even wouldn't be priced in yet, but may still have a significant influence on market price. Price itself also influences underlying fundamentals, such as hashing power or the network security, which tends to increase as a result of higher prices, making Bitcoin more secure and therefore more valuable, increasing future expectations and therefore justifying its higher price. This feedback loop is also known as a reflexive relationship between price and fundamental value of assets. Greed and fear of missing out can also accelerate the overestimation also as part of the reinforcing feedback loop of reflexivity. Higher prices make people expect higher price, which causes prices to go higher. Overestimation of risk and fear, on the other hand, may contribute to the underestimation of the impact on the supply-demand dynamics. I do agree that the Bitcoin market is reasonably efficient according to efficient market theory and that most known facts can be assumed to be priced in, such as the facts of Bitcoin scarcity properties like stock-to-flow. So this will hardly have any influence on the price. The impact of scarcity properties on supply-demand dynamics in past, present and future halving cycles and stock-to-flow models are open to interpretation and investors' expectations and may therefore not be priced in. Rather, be influenced by price action that may reinforce narratives and even become self-fulfilling due to the reinforcing feedback loops it provides. In other words, without rejecting EMT, it does not exclude the possibility for halving cycle narratives and stock-to-flow models and the like to remain intact. In that case, there may still be enough room for the halving effect not to be fully priced in yet. Kevin might make a video on the stock-to-flow model and I assume he will attach some more concrete prices to these assumptions. Subscribe to our channel to get the notification when Kevin's video is published. Assuming that the expected 2020 halving effect will materialize, I do expect the halving effect to fade in following cycles because the effect of inflation rate on the circulating supply will quickly become so small that halvings would have an increasingly smaller impact on supply-demand dynamics. Of course, we should never assume to be right 100%, because my and many of other market participants' expectations may turn out to be completely wrong and that we highly overestimated the 2020 halving effect. Or other factors may disrupt the normal market dynamics, such as a theoretical global economic recession if that occurs simultaneously and forces people to sell their speculative investments, such as Bitcoin, to buy food, 
causing huge pressure on the Bitcoin price, perhaps even cancelling the halving effect. For that reason, I want to add this as a final thought for which credits go to Tone Vase. Whatever your expectations, you should always have a plan and be prepared what you will do in both scenarios if at any next day Bitcoin is worth either $1,000 or $100,000. Alright, stay tuned for the next episode, which will be part 2 of this 2020 outlook, which will include the following topics. Hash rate, Bitcoin dominance, protocol upgrades, regulations and ETF, and my personal 2020 price predictions. Subscribe to the channel to be updated when we release part 2 in this series, What's Up Bitcoin? And don't forget to give this video a like. You can watch one of our other videos next.